Hey, this is Kabir, the CEO and creator of Credit Fixer. Listen, I'm going to give you guys a brief overview of the Credit Fixer software. All right. So what you're looking at right now is the dashboard. Once you log into Credit Fixer, this is what you'll see. Notice you have the dashboard, credit report, credit analysis, dispute center, and you also have the ability to purchase trade lines from within the software. Okay. So once you import your credit report, the first thing you want to do is you want to enter your personal information. It's the first thing you want to do. First name, last name, date of birth, address, import your proof of identity. Now, you only have to import two out of the three of these. Definitely want to import your driver's license or your state ID. You want to import your social security card if you have it. If not, you can use your address and method of verification. And the way you do that, let me show you. Go ahead and delete this. All right, so... Let's go ahead and so let's just say phone bill. So anything like a phone bill or pay stub that has your address, go ahead and import and then click save here. And then click save, close. Now, once you import your identification, these documents, as well as your personal information, will automatically be imported into every dispute letter that you generate within the software. So you only have to input that one time. So it saves you a lot of time when generating dispute letters. The next thing you want to do is you want to import your credit report. Currently, we only have three options. Assume you'll be able to see my free score now. Uh, that'll be another credit report that you can import into the system. All right. And you just want to go ahead and just import your username and your password. S click save and then press import credit report. Okay. Once you do that, You'll notice that it'll let you know if your credit report login is good or not and whether it was successful import. All right, it lets you know the date that you pulled the credit report and also the next time you will have a fresh credit report to import into the software. Generally, your credit reports refresh every 30 days. So every 30 days, you want to come back in here and you want to update your credit report. All right, now all you would have to do is just click import credit report. When you see the next available credit pool, it says February 15th. You want to come back. You want to click update. And then you're going to click import credit report. Okay. Once you import your credit report, there's a credit analysis. Give you a full credit analysis of your credit report. All right. It'll break down your credit report. lets you know exactly what's hurting your credit scores. So wait, this credit report is just a couple of derogatory items and some inquiries. No late payments, six derogatory items, no public records. A little bit more information. Educate you about your credit report. Go ahead and click close here. Now you also have the ability to view your entire credit report. So once you import your credit report, it shows all your personal information, all the accounts, all the positive accounts, all the negative accounts. That's on your credit report. It shows you all your inquiries as well. So let's go back to the dashboard. So the next, the most important part is the dispute center. Once you import your credit report, you'll have a list of all your accounts in the dispute center. It shows you your positive and negative accounts. The negative accounts are highlighted in red. Positive accounts is in green. You can dispute both negative and positive accounts. Now, important point, important note. When, if you decide you want to dispute with the creditor, you have to select this checkbox here. If you don't, you can only create, generate dispute letters for credit bureaus when you click these. Select this credit, um, this checkbox here. So if you want to dispute both, you can. All right. Now, if the creditor doesn't match here, you can locate it and find it here. You would just want to make sure that they match up. Match it. Match is great. Okay. Now let's say I want to select a filter. It lets you know which credit reporting agencies these derogatory items are reporting to. Notice that this one is reporting to Experian and Equifax. This one's only reporting to Equifax. This one's only reporting to Experian and Equifax. All right. Let's go ahead and click public records. You don't have any data furnishers. Now, data furnishers, you have the option of selecting data furnishers that report information to the big three main credit reporting agencies, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. So you want to place security freezes on these, these smaller data furnishers here. So... These are all the data furnishers that you can place security freezes on so that they can't report that information to anyone. Now let's go ahead and click um, inquiries. 
Let's select the filter. Let's see what inquiries we want to dispute. Now, notice you do not want to dispute any inquiries that you ha currently have accounts with because they could close those accounts. So that's the only thing. Notice that this one is SNBC, SNCBC, Banana Republic. You want to find that in here. SNBC, Banana Republic. All right. And. Okay. Still show this. Right here. Look. There we go. All right. Now that I have all of my filters selected, like these are the filters that I selected. When you select these, you won't have to reselect them. Okay. The next thing you want to do is go to your disputes. Remember those data furnishers that we selected here? All the data furnishers that we selected, we can create security freeze letter for. Let's go ahead and click create letter. Now notice all of the ones that we selected it generated those letters for you, all right? Now you do have the option to come in here and edit these letters. You can put, and notice that I have the personal information in here, those documents, okay? You can come in here, you can completely edit any letter that you have in here. So another thing you can do is you can spin these uh, dispute letters. So notice I can spin this letter. And basically what the spin does is it changes up the language within the letter. Okay. So a lot of times they say that these are templated letters. This is what the spin button is for. It allows you to change up the verbiage in the dispute letter. You can spin it as many times as for as many spins that you have. If you don't have any more spins, you can purchase spins by clicking this button here. You can purchase one of the uh, spin packages. Now, when I click the create letter button, it's going to generate letters for all one, two, three, four, five credit reporting data furnishers. Now you're probably wondering where did those letters go? You can go here to dispute tracker and notice those letters that I generated right there. All right, now let's go back to the dispute disputes and let's go to credit creditor. Remember those inquiries that we selected? Let's create an uh, inquiry letter that goes to the creditor. This is going directly to the creditor, Bank of America. This one is going to SMBC. This one is going to Mercedes. This one is going to Truist. Okay. Notice those documents are in there. Let's go ahead and generate those. Done. Again, those letters are here. Shows the date created. And once you mail them out, you want to set the date. Okay. Now let's go back to disputes. So let's generate some credit bureau letters. All right. So let's generate some more inquiry letters for well, the first round inquiry letter for the credit bureaus. All right. So this one's going to TransUnion. All three of those that we selected, TransUnion. This one's only being reported to Experian. And then this one is the only one that's being ex reported to Equifax. And notice that TransUnion has most of the inquiry letters. Let's go ahead and generate those. And this is, notice guys, this is very fast. This is very simple. All your information is already imported into your dispute letter, so it's very fast and efficient. Okay? Those are your letters. Notice that you can also come in here and you can edit your letters. If you find anything wrong or you want to edit them or add anything to the letter, you can come back here and do that. You can change this up if you wanted to. Undo it. You can highlight it. Let's see. Background color yellow. You can do so many th different things. An update letter. That letter is updated. So when you come back here and view it, see the highlighted letter? Great. Okay. So let's go back to the dispute center. Let's go to disputes. Now, one other thing that I want to show you is that. Notice that you have the dispute strategies. If you have collections or charge-offs, you want to follow the dispute strategy. So if you have collections and charge-offs, start with the round one letter and then just follow it based off of how they respond. And there's also video tutorials that explain like what the letter is and why you're sending the letter, okay? All right. Now let's go to, let's talk about Metro 2. Now, Metro 2, I'll talk about this in another video, but Metro 2, 
is a compliance dispute strategy. Now, this one is fairly new to the credit repair scene. It's been around for years. However, most people are just being introduced to it. And I have a pretty unique dispute, Metro dispute strategy. Let me just generate this letter, bulldozer letter. Notice that this letter creates an attack on all items on your credit report. All right. So based off of that filter that you generated or selected, it generates, oh, wow, I can show you better than I can tell you. All right. Notice that all of the items that we selected, whether it's increase, collections, if you have public records, late payments, they will create all of them in one letter. So remember all those negative items? They're right here. Now let's go to this one. I think TransUnion. Let's look at TransUnion. TransUnion has the fraudulent increase. Send a response. Closure. Let's see. This one has negative increase in accounts. Notice that nothing with JMBC is now reporting to TransUnion. So you only saw increase in this one as well as personal information. So I'll talk more about the Metro 2 dispute letters in another video. Now, it comes with an attack guide. If you follow this guide, you will find tremendous success. Just follow it and send the letters exactly as this guide shows you. All right. Now, once you generate your letters, how do you send your letters? So you have a few options. You can download your dispute letters. You can send them by mail or you can send them via fax. All right. So. Let's go ahead and you can select multiple and do it at one time. Let's go ahead and select these. Now, if you select the more actions button, you can download them individually. You can download them as a zip file, or you can send them again, like we said, by certified mail or by mail. There's a couple options. So it's packaging up those dispute letters for you. Okay. So you see all the letters that we selected are right here. Now you have the option of selecting whether you want to send it first class mail, certified mail. Notice the price changes based off of what you select. You can certify mail plus return receipt. You can send it double sided. You can send it uh, to save a little, save more paper. You can send it uh, with color. It's a little bit more, costs a little bit more. Okay. I'm gonna send these just. Certified mail, first class. And then you would just click pay and mail. All right. And then they will mail out those letters. Once you do mail out your letters, you can take a look at how you sent your letters. Oh, my API key isn't set in here yet. There's a video that I have in the system called Law. We use Law to actually mail out our letters. You can watch that video and it show you how to input your API key. You would just go to settings and you would copy your test key. Copy your live key. You can set it to live or test mode. So when you do uh, send out your dispute letters, they will show up here inside of a certified mail section. And there's also the Credit Fixer blog. You can read the blogs. There's also an affiliate program. If you want to make some money by sharing the Credit Fixer software, I actually improve this to 20%. So you can make 20% off of anyone that signs up using your affiliate link. It's free and you can make money by showing people how to improve their credit. All you have to do is share your link. Trade lines. So you do have the ability to purchase trade lines. There's hundreds of thousands of trade lines in here that you can purchase. Just go in here, add to cart, 60,000, 50,000, then view cart. Shows you. Purchase any of these trade lines here. Place order, enter your personal information, sign the authorized agreement. And then that's pretty much the Credit Fixer overview. Oh, also be sure to follow Credit Fixer. Join our private community. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at Credit Fixer. And if you want to become an affiliate, go ahead and click this and get paid. So that's Credit Fixer in a, in a nutshell. I hope this helps. Thank you guys for watching.